If you are interested in the Christmas Eve bundle, Christmas Eve bundle, stay tuned because there's going to be a grand reveal when I get to shop news. <laughs> it's Hannah and welcome to episode 81 of the Corner of Craft podcast. I hope that you're all well. This episode of the Corner of Craft podcast is sponsored by Skillshare. Thanks Skillshare. But we'll chat about them in a little bit. How have you been? I hope you're all well. Um, the baby bubs, i.e. the kittens, um, are sleeping upstairs at the moment. Bless them. Um, I couldn't find kimchi earlier. She is a black cat and I had no idea where she was. Um, but I could hear her purring. She's very loud at purring. Um, and I could hear her, so I knew she was in the room. But yeah, curled up on Mario's, pair of Mario's trousers, and they were black trousers, so that's why I couldn't find her. Anyway, <laughs> she was there. Um, I hope you're all well. It's been a month since I last spoke to you. It's now September, that's mad. Um, I've decided it's cold today. I'm filming this on Monday. It's cold here, so I've put on my vaguely autumnal jumper. This is the um, so faded jumper pattern, but obviously I have not faded anything. This is um, down Sheepy Lane yarn. I suppose I could do a whole segment of what I'm wearing, but uh, in Faded Woods, it's her Bamboo and BFL base, and I just did elbow length sleeves. Right now I'm regretting not doing longer sleeves, but you know, that's fine. Um, as I've already said, my name is Hannah. If you are new, if you're not, then my name is, it's still Hannah. Um, I, I am the owner of the Corner of Craft. I make hand-beaded stitch markers, and I also dye yarn in colors inspired by Dungeons and Dragons um, under the umbrella Chromatic Yarns. I'm a tea fanatic. I am a proud cat owner. And um, if you'd like to follow me on social media to see all of the things that I've discussed, links can all be found in the description box below, along with link to podcast notes, which will be up on my website. I, um, yeah, if, I, if, if the designers I mentioned don't have a website, I'm linked to their Instagram, so then you can find where to get stuff. No links go to Ravelry, because I know it's not a safe website for everyone. Um, before we get too much further into it, let's chat a little bit about Skillshare, shall we? Thank you so much once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all of you lovely friends who are watching this video for clicking the link that will be in the description box below and uh, allowing these kinds of sponsorships to continue because it all helps. It all helps. Skillshare is a fantastic online learning community for those of us who are creative and curious. There are so many classes on there that you can learn from, be it running a small business to social media all the way over to knitting, painting, journaling, photography, literally everything. Anything creative that you could have thought of and then some, and then some. Whether you just want to improve on the skills that you already have or you want to try something completely new, there are classes available for you and you can filter them by difficulty, which I do love. It means you don't have to waste your time relearning something or being told something you already know. You can skip the easy stuff if you're no longer a beginner or if you need the ground roots level, just get, they're all there. Every level of difficulty. There are so many knitting classes available as well, all the way from walking you through how to knit your own sock, to cables, to colour work, to all sorts, but there are also other yarn crafts there too. So if you want to learn something new with that stash of yarn that we all have, get on Skillshare. Yes. The class that I'm currently taking, it's, it's a little out of left field, but after the ad read, I will talk about why. Um, but the class is called iPhone Food Photography, Styling and Shooting for Instagram by Melina Hammer. And whilst I don't have an iPhone, I think it's more camera phone. I think iPhones just used to grab your attention. But um, food photography is going to be coming more of a thing. Um, we'll chat about it. So I thought, you know, take a class, learn some basic skills because it's not something that I am very good at. And luckily this class walks you all through it and you have got various assignments and all sorts. Speaking of assignments, as someone who thrives off feedback, I love feedback, 
please give me your feedback. Um, <laughs> You can do you can do work and submit your project below the class. There is a place for you to do that. There are also places where you can discuss with your with the other people who are also taking the class, um, and you can leave reviews and all sorts. And you can see all of this before you even take the class. So if you think if you if you're wondering if it's going to waste your time or not, I mean it probably won't. But you know you can read through the reviews and see if it's what you want to know or what not. But class projects, I love that you can submit that. Two-way conversation, it's great. As the website is created with learning in mind, there are no ads to interrupt you. You won't, it, you, you'll get into the flow of it and the flow will just keep going. There will be no stop to the flow unless you stop the flow. No ads, we love that. There are always classes available and live workshops and there are more and more popping up every single day so if you think that that is something that you would be interested in please click the link in the top pinned comment or in the description box below to earn yourself one month, yes, a free month to Skillshare's premium membership. It's only running through to through September and then it's, then it's done though so uh, click that link, snag your spot do all of the learning, tell me what classes that you've been taking um, and yeah, because it might be useful, we'll bounce off each other. Thank you so much once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this podcast and uh, yeah, let's let's get back to the nitty gritty of it all, shall we? Ooh, I wonder what tea Hannah is drinking. Well, Hannah, it's funny you should ask that, oh, I'm so slick. Um, the tea I'm drinking today is Bird and Blend Spiced Pumpkin Pie that I've saved from last year, so it's not the most it's not the most pungent of tea anymore. Yeah. It was better when it was fresh. But you know what? It feels like a, a, a mild hint of autumn, which is very much how it feels today. Because it's, as of filming, still, still August for me. Um, and also September is the summer. Because very often around my birthday, which is mid-September by the way, and put it in your calendars, um, two weeks today, as you're watching this actually, I believe, I'm going to be turning 31. Um, where is this last year gone? Nobody knows. I'm not going to dwell on that too much because honestly nobody actually knows. But words, yes. This, it, the, the tea is very apt for kind of how I feel at the minute. It's kind of the, the, the mild hint of autumn as opposed to, oh, it's so autumnal, mm, let me get all snug. No, it's not. It's still August, but um, we've had this weather for the whole of the month of August, except for maybe up to three sunny days. Like, I'm wearing woolen socks and trousers and a jumper right now with a vest on underneath, and I'm still cold, wishing that I'd knit long sleeves. I mean, I've still got extra yarn, I can always knit long sleeves if I want to, but yeah, what the heck, August. Um, yes, knitting, shall we chat about it a little bit, yeah. If you are interested in the Christmas Eve bundle, Christmas Eve bundle, stay tuned because there's going to be a grand reveal when I get to shop news. We have a finished object, folks, we do. Um, uh-huh, and it's a pair of hose, which means it's actually just a finished object. Just, it's been a while since I've used a sock blocker, so I'm very out of practice. Um, there's also potential that I've put my heel in the wrong place. But I was knitting these in the last podcast, now they are finished. Um, these are just some very pretty socks. So the yarn is Milky Way, it is by Stripey Cat Yarns, super cute. It comes with a contrasting mini skein, if you want a contrasting mini skein, I did, I got one, um, in this beautiful purple colour, and yeah, I've only used it for the cuff and heels, just because, you know, spicy, use as much of the self-striping yarn as you can, and I got a pretty long sock out of it. I did Kirby Werby's Afterthought Heel, um, that's the one where you cut the yarn bloop, and then knit the heel like you would a toe. Um, and yes, Stripey Cat Yarns actually does have some of this in her shop. I think, I believe it's dyed to order. It, if, it might, but, anyway, there's a listing in her shop uh, for this particular colorway as well as so many others. 
Um, so go check out her shop and uh, treat yourself to some self-striping. I went for the BFL base because I love a BFL base for a sock. Um, and also full stop. But in particular for a sock because um, I find that they're much harder wearing. I know that not everyone can wear BFL, some people find it a bit scratchy, but um, I love it. I find that they're much harder wearing and all the socks that have holes in, they're all merino. So, yes. I think I'll probably be knitting fewer merino socks in the future. And definitely for Mario, he probably won't get any merino socks because he doesn't wear slippers with his socks, so... He's lost the privilege of baby soft socks. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yes, these are super cute and I'm excited to wear them now. Yes. Right, that's it, that's my only finished object. I know, you were all hoping I'd finished the Lotus Star. Truth be told, I was hoping I'd finished the Lotus Star as well, but I haven't been knitting on it a whole lot. Um, I have been, gosh, dropping things. No, I've been bead weaving a lot, knitting these obviously, but I've been bead weaving a lot and um, yeah. Knitting isn't the cat friendliest thing in the world, although I've been just trying to, I've just been risking it the last few nights and it's been paying off. So maybe I'll just start knitting a bit more. But yeah, I mean bead weaving isn't that cat friendly either, especially when Miso insists of coming and sitting on my lap whilst I'm bead weaving, which is very cute and I love it, but also she does like to try and attack the thread. Bless her little cotton socks. She was the skinnier one of the two cats when we got them. We took them, or well, Mario took them to the vets last week for their microchipping and um, other vaccine and we started them on their flea and worm and tick treatment. I know some of you don't care about the cats, but I love them so much. I can't imagine my life without them. Um, yes, and they both got weighed and Miso is now the slightly chunkier one of the two. Bless her. Bless her. But yeah, I think she just eats, sometimes eats kimchi's share of the food. <laughs> Giving them tablets was very successful. Um, some of you, I asked on Instagram what are some techniques that people have used. And some people suggested like putting them in pill pockets and, and things like that, which I believe is a US thing. I haven't had a look to see if they're here. But we crushed up the pills and stirred it with some, um, we had like, the, you know, the, the treats that come in, they come in like a tube, like a frube. I don't know if frube is a, is an international, don't think it is. It's yogurt in a tube and you tear, squeak, frube. Um, yes, it's like a frub treat, but it's not a frub, it's cat food. But we like split the cat, we split that treat in half and gave half in the, and then we put it on a spoon, off the spoon. And, um, yeah, they ate their tablet and they loved it, so. I realise that some of you don't, don't hugely care about the cats, but they're a real significant part of my life right now. <laughs> Let's chat about the Lotus Star, shall we? Shall we? This is living in my The Little Grey Girl project bag, my little sushi bag. I love it. The Lotus Star is a pattern by Kirsten Anderson, I believe. And uh, it's in the summer pom-pom, summer 2021 pom-pom. Ooh, I need to twist some more yarn up. Yeah, that's right. I've not twisted any more yarn up since I last spoke to you. I've knit on this a little bit since... I didn't put a stitch marker in, but I know I've knit on this a little bit since last talking to you. Um, Cause I knit it some, I knit a bit on it the other night and Mario was like, what's that? And I was like, oh, it's this jumper. He's like, oh, you've been working on that a while, haven't you? Oh, thanks. Uh, yes, that's the loving conversations we have. Um, yeah, it's really cute. I've done the interesting part, which I think is part of the struggle. Um, I noticed that a stitch marker had fallen off and was very confused why there was two on one side and three on the other but I know, found where it needed to go and put it back on um, and then closed the gap up a little bit. That's the joys of using split rings as um, your stitch markers is sometimes they come apart slightly but that's fine, it's easy enough to fix. Uh, yeah, I'm getting on with the body, I've got one more lot of increases to go and then I need to like maybe measure this one. How long is this one? Yeah, I feel like this is a good length, measure against this one and and you know what I'm not I'm not far off 
I'm almost at the ribbing on comparison to this jumper, so we might almost be there. I need to stand up and have a look in the mirror, obviously, because who, who can judge by me awkwardly laying on a large chair? But um, yes, and then I got two blimmin' sleeves to knit, so. Um, yeah, I am using chromatic yarns. My, my own hand, I don't um, And my nails don't go at all. Um, I thought I did. Sturdy DK base, 100% superwash BFL in Potion of Healing. Yes. I mean, it's a colourway I dyed up specifically for this jumper that I then named, but yes. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. Um, yeah. I believe the pattern is like awkward, awkward length sleeves, but I think I'm going to go full length sleeves for like my full gorilla arm moment. Um, because I've got long arms. I might have to knit more sleeve on these, you know. This is the thing, you never know unless you start wearing it. Um... Yeah, I might need to go a bit lower, even full length. I don't know. I always roll my sleeves up though, but I never roll them to like this high. I always roll them to like here. It's nice to have the option of pulling them down, like when my forearms get cold, like now. But yes, Lotus Star, they're going to be full length sleeves, and then I can wear it just in time for autumn. And then I can plan my next jumper because I've got so many sweater quantities, I need to cast one on pretty speedily afterwards. So I really want to knit. Tristan Sanderson sweater but I need to dye yarn for that which is counterproductive because I kind of want to use stash so love love this I love this oh now I've seen how close I am to finishing it it's given me the drive I need to actually knit it I've been a little stressed this week I'll be completely honest with you so what has happened since I've got another whip What's happened since I last spoke to you all is found a builder. I can't remember if I talked about this. Found a builder to turn the die shed into a functional die shed and not just a spider's clubhouse. Um, and so he's been here a lot, which is fine uh, because he obviously needs to be because he's doing his job. Um, but the issue is, is that my parents were here last weekend visiting because they wanted to see the baby bubs, um, cats. And so they were here Friday to Tuesday morning. And then the builder had been here from the Monday. Yeah, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, my parents came, the builder also came. Saturday, also parents and builder. Sunday, no builder, yes parents. Monday, builder parents. Tuesday, builder and a little bit parents, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, builder. I usually spend quite a lot of time by myself, especially this past year, because um, Mario works. And I mean, I work too, but you know what I mean. He leaves the house to do his work. I do not. Uh, so I was very peopled out. Not only that, I couldn't actually dye any yarn because where I currently dye yarn is like a main walkthrough where the builder needs to get to and, and yeah. So I got really stressed about advents. I got really stressed about all the other stuff I needed to dye. And I was so done with people and making a cup of coffee every hour. So I just needed a day. I just needed a day to be selfish. Um, I know this is very much first people problems, but my social battery was empty, it was so empty. And it's not even that I needed to be, I wanted to be by myself, it's that I wanted there to not be other people at my house. Um, of people that don't live here. So yesterday he wasn't here. And, oh, I felt so much better. I got all of the six days for the 12 days of Stitchmas died up, they're all died up now. And I got two advent days dyed, and I did a solid seven and a half hours of dyeing, mildly interrupted because I needed to go buy another drying rack, so I nipped to Wilco's and then they didn't have a drying rack in Wilco's, so then I went to B&M and they didn't have a drying rack in B&M, so then I came home with no drying rack. But it's fine, I made it work. Um, but yeah, seven and a half, and I took my knitting through. Oh, I don't know what happened there. I took my knitting through to do some knitting. Did I do any knitting the whole time? No, I did no knitting. Didn't even sit down. 
while yarn was dying, I had other yarn soaking, and whilst that was all happening, and that's nothing I can do anything with, I was um, prepping the next skeins. And it was just like a constant thing. I didn't do any formal exercise yesterday and still did over 8,000 steps, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is to someone who sits down quite a lot. And considering I only left the house for maybe 15, 20 minutes, not bad, but yeah. I was really stressed out about getting all of this this Christmas stuff done. Um, but I feel so much better now. I just needed that day yesterday to get loads of stuff dyed up. And oh, oh. When the dye shed is all finished, there will be a formal dye shed tour. Yes, mate. Um, where I will tour the dye shed for you and show you what it looks like and show you what it is. At the minute, it's got loads of equipment like building stuff in it and whatnot, but I have worktops, there's a sink, the new window's coming on Friday, the flooring's coming tomorrow, the electrician's coming on Friday, it's all happening Friday, and yeah. Then I might need a little Ikea trip it's where I can get like shelving up and then I'd need to transport all of the bay yarn that's up upstairs down, in. It's all part of the fun. Um, but yeah, it's happening. I'm really excited. I just, my social battery was really empty and whenever I took a cup of tea out, when I take, whenever I take a cup of coffee out to him, he is very chatty and that, it's lovely. Um, and usually I'm very, like tomorrow, I'll be so like back on it, but I was just peopled out. But yesterday's very productive dye day has completely changed my attitude. Thank God I didn't podcast yesterday because I was grumpy in the morning till I danced around the kitchen all day. It doesn't taste as good as it used to taste. Maybe it's oversteeped slightly. I don't know. It's old. That's what it is. It's just old. Anyway. Next whip, living in this beautiful project bag that Rachel made for me, who used to be called Ravenclaw Rachel, but now I don't know, if she, now she's not. I can't remember what her new Instagram handle is, but Rachel, I use your project bag all the time. Um, and it's got magical creatures on it. So it's got some pixies, it's got um, spiders, it's got some kind of demon bird. Uh, it's got um, griffins and it's got unicorns. I decided it was time for a new cast on. Something a bit more autumnal. Um, this is what I took through to knit and then I didn't knit it. So this colourway is actually last year's Christmas Day colourway from the Chromatic Yarns Advent Calendar. So I'm knitting with my own yarn again and I hadn't realised. <laughs> decided to cast Mario a sock. Cast on a sock for Mario. Um, this colourway is called Lathander's Mulled Red and I didn't write down the dye recipe so I can never dye it again which is a shame because it's knitting up beautifully. It's got like a black and yellow spiral that's going to be going round and down the sock which is really fun and I hadn't anticipated that happening. Um, but yeah, I like it. I like it. It's kind of getting in a mess. So um, 72 stitches. Uh, 2.5 millimeter needles. I did 15 rounds of 2x2 two two rib for the cuff and then I'm doing a 3x1 rib on the body. So knit 3 purl 1 in old money. I don't know if it's old money or alternative money um, or different currency. Um, but my mum always says knit 2 purl 2 instead of 2x2 two two rib. It's knit 2 purl 2 and knit 3 purl or whatever. But you know, new money, old money, different currency. Um, yes. And yeah, I don't know whether to do a standard heel flap and gusset because he does like how they fit, but you know what? They're a ball ache to knit. Um, that rhymed beautifully. Knitting merch, anyone? I feel like I can't have the phrase ball ache on any knitting merch. I don't know, I don't know, it might, might work. Uh, anyway. 
yeah so I might do that if not I'll do a New Depths heel which is a pattern by Becky Sorensen it's my go-to heel pattern but um, it fits me really well but it doesn't fit him as well so I'll probably end up doing a heel flap and gusset and I hate doing a heel flap and gusset because I feel like I'm decreasing for the rest of my life I'm not um, I have a little froggy stitch marker on here from Yarnistry which is super cute. I love him, his little perky face. Okay, my nails go with this. I put on a Christmassy nail varnish, but I just liked the deep red color and I thought I'm gonna wear this jumper and then I don't think it goes. Oh, it kind of goes with my orangey speckles a little bit, but I should have gone like a pale pale pink, or not pale pink, but like a dusty mauve. Um, but yeah, I was knitting these yesterday. We watched, started watching Cruella because it's now free to watch on Disney Plus. We have half an hour left to watch, but Mario was starting to drift off um, because he'd had a very early morning, yesterday morning. So he was tired. And I just, I mean, I'm in love with Emma Stone, full stop. But um, I want her wardrobe in Cruella and I want those tortoise shell glasses. That's it. I just want those tortoise shell glasses. I mean, it doesn't help that I'm really sick of my glasses and need to go to the opticians because I'm wearing the wrong prescription and have been for two years. But, you know, you win some, you lose some. Okay, shall we chat shop news briefly? Um, there's not a whole lot. Oh no, that's not true. There's a little bit. Well, I've already talked about the dye shed and all of that excitement going on. Um, I'm really excited about actually having a designated space and so if I need to do any work I can just go down and do some and it will be great. So I currently dye in an oven uh, and I'm obviously not going to be able to, not obviously, I'm not going to be having an oven in the dye shed um, so I'm not going to be dying in an oven but I'm thinking of getting some of the um, hot plates like the double ones and then trays on top like um, Gastronorm pans, chafers, is that also what they're called? Gastronorm pans, the big ones that you get in hotels. Um, I'm putting them on the induction hobs. I was thinking if I could get four of those, that would be great. Uh, four burners, so I could have four trays on the go at once. And then I was talking to somebody else and she was saying about how she uses like an insert so she could do double the amount of that. Mm might be worth trying but it's whether or not these gastronome pans are can be used with induction because usually they're not used to be cooked like on a hob they're usually used for like keeping food warm so i need to do a bit more finding out about that but anyway very excited about that i am still busy making stitch markers for the 12 days of stitchmas i have 17 of the final stitch marker made so that means that i've got 13 more to make um, but that's fine they're happening bit by it bit by bit and then the Christmas Eve bundle oh so the 12 days of Stitchmas that might end up being shipped at the end of September that might end up being shipped early just because all the yarns died up once all the stitch markers are done and any other little bits arrive bag them up send them off you know this is this is now what it gets down to with pre-orders it's cool when they're done get them out the door need the space um so and also i need the headspace to not have to think about that one so um yes yeah, so they might go they might be going out early the advents are still going i'm still plowing through i think my maximum at the moment where how i'm currently dying is I can do four days at a time and I currently have 10 days done so I've got 14 days left to go so that's fine like we're we're doing all right we're we're vaguely on track and then and then yeah it's all right it'll all get done so Christmas Eve bundle box I had this idea ages ago to do a Christmas Eve bundle box and um I always called you Heather her name is Kat but her Instagram handle is Heather Hops Heather and Hops um so I will, in my head, her name is Heather. It's not, her name is Kat. Uh, she, 
she has designed an absolutely beautiful sock pattern. She reached out to me, she said, hey, I was gonna do a Christmas sock pattern if you wanted a sock pattern. I was like, you know what, I actually do. Perfect. So it's all been happening, it's all been ticking away behind the scenes. Um, and then my sister has started to make project bags, um, the little blue robin. And I said, hey, so I'm doing this bundle. If you want to do project bags for it, that would be amazing. Obviously no pressure. So, well, it's not the grand reveal. If you're on my Instagram, you would have already seen what it all looks like, but grand reveal on the podcast. So, this is the yarn that you'll be getting. Very different from my usual style of dyeing. I, I understand this. This is the colorway Winter's Crest Eve. Stop focusing my face and please focus on the yarn. It is a BFL, 75% superwash BFL, 25% nylon. You get a mini skein, a little pastel pink mini skein, and then this is very blown out. And it's kind of delicate greens and pinks, and it's, very, it's a very delicate Christmas color. Once again, I understand it's not my usual dyeing style, but I love this colorway made better because of the sock pattern. Hi, if you're over with Hannah, then you probably haven't seen me before. My name is Kat, I'm a knitter in the UK, just like Hannah, that is very much into Critical Role and Dungeons and Dragons. Um, this year we had a bit of fun and we've kind of collaborated I would say Hannah, this is Hannah's baby. I've just been like a, I don't know, like a little gobbling on the side, trying to help in any way I can. Hopefully you've already seen her gorgeous yarns and the sock set. And this one is the Winter's Crest one, which hopefully you will have seen already. And Hannah, way back when, sent me this really beautiful image of a tree and it's kind of like minimal, sagey, pinky, really gentle, but a very gentle Christmas image and as soon as I saw it I kind of had my heart set on creating a very simple pattern that could be cast on on Christmas Eve around other humans or elves, whoever you're surrounded by, um, and knit it up and then having the interest at the top where you've maybe Christmas has passed or winter's crests past, or the holidays are sort of drawing to a close but you've maybe got a bit more time to sit on your own and knit on something that has a little bit more interest, a little bit more, requires a bit more attention. So I took the inspiration of the Christmas tree and the D20 and here is the uh, special top part so to speak. It is the shape of a D20 with a Christmas tree in the center. And yeah, this is the pattern. It has a kind of an umbrella toe. They are knitted toe up, which for me just means that you can use as much of the yarn as possible and try it on as you go. It has a short row heel, which you of course could omit to be any one of your favorites. And then it has multiple options for the ribbing. They are two separate socks in that the design is flipped so you can have the pattern on the outside of either sock and they are flipped. You of course could omit the bobbles if you're not a bobble person. So these are the socks. Is that it? I hope. Nice little cup of tea because you're going to get some tea in the bundle as well. Um, I just need a confirmation of when when Bird and Blend Christmas teas are available. They've not got back to me as of time of recording. I'll double check my email actually. They've not got back to me at time of recording, so, but there'll be some kind of tea. It might not be festive, but I really want it to be festive, so fingers crossed. So this colorway is Winter's Crest Eve and the sock pattern is the Winter's Crest pattern named after the um, winter celebration in Taldore in Critical Role campaign one. Um, but yeah, there will be some photos and, and all sorts on Instagram, so. 
then you will also get, along with the tea that I have forementioned, um, you will also get this fantastic project bag, which I'm doing a terrible job of showing off. This fantastic project bag, which is a little sock bag. Let's put some yarn in it so you can see that it fits. Let's put this project in it for the time being. It has a nice sturdy base. So uh, if you were to put it on a floor or anything, no moisture would get through. Um, it has really cute, you've got, uh, the fabric is beautiful, so you've got knitted mittens, you've got st sock stockings, you've got hats, little bobble hats, and it's super cute, you've got gold sparkly thread here and here and here, uh, it's a drawstring, I love a drawstring bag, I love a drawstring bag, um, you get free cat hair, you don't get free cat hair, I promise, I can't promise. I will try really hard for there to not be any cat hair on it, but you know, life with cats. Um, it's got a handle so you can pop it onto your wrist if you're going for a Christmas walk, uh, depending how cold it is, obviously. And then the fabric inside, golden starry mate, it's golden starry in it. Of course it is, of course it blimmin' is, because there's gold stars on the outside too. And a little green trim. Uh, so yeah, it was pointed out to Charlotte, my sister, um, who is the, the the little blue robin? It was pointed out to her that it's like an Italian Italian flag. She's very apt, seeing as she is dating an Italian and I am married to an Italian. But um, yes, beautiful. So you get one of these bags, and not only that, not only that, you will also get a cute little stitch marker like this. Yes, me. I don't know if this, I'm doing an accurate job. I'm just going to get a tiny piece close because I don't have my glasses on, so. Yes, me. Yes, me. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. Um, and I went with this because it's vaguely reminiscent. I mean, it doesn't match, but vaguely reminiscent of some of the mittens on here and yes. So I thought that would be really cute. So you get all of that. You get a sock pattern, hopefully hopefully a print a printout if all goes to plan. You get a sock pattern, you get a sock set, you get a stitch marker, you get a project bag, you get a 20 gram pouch of tea from Bird and Blend and yes, they will be shipping at the end of October they will be going on sale, important bit, I forgot to mention this. They'll be going on sale tomorrow, Saturday, at 2pm BST. Yes. So that is very exciting. They will all be sent tracked. I am only going to be having 50 slots open because, you know, we need to make all of this stuff. Uh, I'm only going to have 50 slots open, but if they sell really quickly, what I might be able, what I will do is I will put up um, listings for the sock set and the pattern and potentially the stitch marker, depending how much of a glutton for punishment I am. Um, but I'll po pop up a listing for just the sock set and the pattern so you can also participate in the Christmas Eve cast on because it's always easier for me just to, to dye up more yarn than it is to make however many more project bags. So there's a limit, there is a limit on how many uh, kits will be available with the project bag. Um, oh, so beautiful. And yes, and a little stitch marker. But if more sell, or if they all sell quicker than I'd anticipated, then yes. But once again, these will not be able to be combined with the advent calendar because all of the postage costs and everything will have already been worked out. So um, I can't do ultimate combo of anything. I'm terribly sorry, but it's just how my brain, how I can like manage all this with my brain. <laughs> But I'm really excited about it. Um, I know that the yarn is like a little, a little different from what I usually come up with, but I think it's really perfect for the um, for the sock pattern that Kat has come up with. So 
I'm really excited and I just think it's a delightful idea for us to all be sat down at around a similar time although time zones but all around a similar time with our little cup of tea casting on our winter's crest socks I just think that would be sweet it's really pretty anyway I'm going to stop tooting my own horn about this sock yarn even then uh, but yeah if you haven't been on my Instagram then that will be the grand reveal but if you've already been on there then it's not a grand reveal you've already seen it on Tuesday but it's the first time I've talked about it so that was my practice run for the Instagram video that I'm going to film <laughs> um, anyway that's all I have for shop stuff I'm really hoping that if I can just like get the dye shed done and then plow through and get all of these advents done and out the door then I can get all excited about dyeing up some Christmas yarns and making some Christmas stitch markers trying to although I've been doing that since April but um and then trying to get a couple of Christmas shop updates in and then December I'll probably maybe try and have one update or two because life news uh, so in the ad read I mentioned about how food photography was going to become a much more prevalent thing in my life um, and that is because Mario is opening his own bakery it's very exciting he's opening up his own bakery he has rented a unit he's getting the keys on Thursday so he'd already have them by the time you're watching this um, and yes, the next month he'll be kitting it out, getting the electric sorted and getting equipment in and all sorts. And then hopefully in October -y time, he will be driving around various villages in North Nottingham, setting up little pop-up bakery things around in like pub car parks, but also at markets and stuff. And he's really excited about it. So if you're around Nottingham, please go follow at Batched Bakehouse on Instagram. Um, and that way we'll be able to keep you up to date on what is happening with Batched Bakehouse, which is the name of Mary's new bakery. Or if you just want to give it a follow and support him on his new business venture, because we're going to be two business owners under one roof paying a mortgage. So... Let's hope these sell well. I'm kidding. But at the same time, setting up a bakery is expensive. It's expensive. As is getting a dye shed sorted. The dye shed is a, is a luxury, I'm well aware. In all fairness, so setting your own, your own business a luxury. But yes, the more I drink it, the better it, it gets. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for him. And I'm really excited for, um, you know, the prospects. So... He might be busy around Christmas time, so he might need a helping hand. Uh, so yeah, luckily because postage takes a long time and my business relies on postage, a lot of my stuff is hopefully going to be done before December. So I can ship it all off and you will hopefully be able to have it by Christmas. All of the hopefullys. Um, but yeah, I really want to do Vlogmas again this year, but I guess I'll just have to wait and see with the bakery. If not, I suppose you'll just come with me to the bakery and I'll be filming myself at the bakery. Uh, yeah. So that's really exciting and yeah. So not only do I have the fun of running one business's social media, I have the, biz the joy of running two businesses' social media. <laughs> I just need to teach Mario how to do it really, don't I? Yeah. Bless him. Anyway. He hates social media. <laughs> he finds it really annoying and I completely understand. But I like it. Um, but yeah, as opposed, as, uh, apart from that, you've kind of got little snippets of life updates throughout the thing. I'm still working out with personal trainer. Ooh, I went this morning. Um, so my arms feel a little like jelly. But yeah, other than that, I think I think that's everything. So... We have a new leaf on our bird of paradise plant. Nobody cares, but I'm really proud because I thought I'd killed it and we've got two new leaves, so I haven't killed it. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, please feel free to check out the link in the top pinned comment and also in the description box below to snag your free spot to Skillshare's premium membership. 
as always. Um, also, podcast notes are linked down there as well. So if you want any more information about anything that I've talked about or anything that I've forgotten to talk about, hopefully that will all be in the podcast notes. If you'd like to follow me on social media, links as always can be found in the description box below. Please leave me a comment. Thank you. Uh, let me know what you've been up to this past month. Uh, have you started any autumn knits? Are you already wearing hand knits where you are? I don't know what the weather's doing. Although in the in the southern hemisphere, I suppose, you would already be wearing hand knits because you'll be approaching spring. Seasons. I forget that half of the world has experiences them at different times. Um, if you would like to give the video a thumbs up, I would very much appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this and would like to see more of my face popping up in your subscription feed, I really want to get back to doing more regular videos. Um, feel free to subscribe. I would love it if you were to join the party that is the Corner of Craft. It would be delightful to have you here. But with all that being said, thank you so, so much once again for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.